Welcome to the how to tutorial series of standardized data integrator part 2. In this video we are going to have a look at a complex data flow where we are going to learn about how to use maps, transformations, data quality rules, data profiling and uh, we are writing that as a report into Excel file. Shared on the screen is a complex uh, data flow and in this scenario I am taking two source files. One contains information about home loans and other contains information about the property tax for corresponding home loans. And I have to combine these two pieces of data and uh, do some conversion data by doing some calculations on attributes. And uh, at the end, I have to route them to two different destination tables depending on the origin of the home loan. So if the home loan is from California, it goes to California loans table. Otherwise, it goes to out of state loans table. Alongside, I am checking the data quality at the beginning and uh, checking the quality of the data for the tax data. And at the same time, I'm doing some profiling on tax data and sending it as a report to an Excel file. So this is how this scenario looks like once the data flow is created. But for this exercise, we're going to start with a clean slate so I go ahead and click on new data flow. So I have a new data flow here and uh, I have to design the data flow that we just saw from beginning. So for that, let's go ahead and have a look at the data. So this is my loans data and tax data. So in the sample one, we learned that how to create sources by dragging and dropping the items from the toolbox and specifying properties. However, in Centerprise, uh, there are shortcuts to create sources directly. I will take the loans from the folder and drag and drop directly onto the designer and uh, it has done everything for us. It has created the source, it has the layout, it knows about where the file is and everything. I click on the chevron and you can see here all my attributes are here. I can do a preview and I can see all my data in the preview window. The same thing for the tax file. So if I drag and drop the tax file from the directory to the designer, my tax data is also become my source. I can preview data and I can see for each of my loans, there is a property tax information. Now to combine these two, we're going to use the join transformation. So I drag and drop the join onto the designer and uh, we can see here it does not have any fields in it and we want to take all the fields from the loans and the tax so we are going to use the same trick that we learned in the last sample we drag and drop the top node at the top of join one and you can see here it has mapped and created all the fields inside join and it has taken all the fields from loans and uh, now we have to add the two fields from tax to that I drag and drop the individual field at the top of new element and you see here it is added and the same thing we do with the loan ID it has appended underscore one since loan ID already existed existed in loans now we have all the fields required for uh, for the join we right click and go to the properties of join and we see all our fields from loans and taxes we go to the next page and uh, this is where we specify what kind of join it is it is a simple inner join sort in the left and right inputs and specify the keys using which it is going to do the join so for the loans it is the loan id field and for the taxes we call it loan id underscore one we pick these two click on ok and our join is ready i can go ahead and do a preview on this and you can see here for each of the loans it has added the property tax and loan id underscore one along with other fields from loan. So this is by doing a few clicks, we join the two sources. Now join one becomes our next step and this will act as source for further transformation and maps. We are going to have a look at some maps uh, to do some conversions. Let's have a look at expression map. And this is used to do calculations and uh, any kind of uh, combination of data. Say for example, in this case, I see my loans has the name of the borrower, state and zip code. 
and I would like to combine the name, state and zip code into one field and call it address in my destination. To do that, we'll be using expression. And since uh, this is my source, this is my map, I'm going to need a destination. And the natural next step is uh, for this scenario, since we are going to do a routing into two different destinations, our immediate next step is a router. So let's go ahead and, and put a router on the designer. So router becomes my next destination. And uh, in the input of the expression, there is nothing. So let's go ahead and drag and drop the three fields that we want to combine name, state, and zip code. And uh, let's go to the properties of expression by clicking on next button here. And now I'm presented with this rules writer where I can write any kind of rules. And you can see here in the box of the functions, we, it has all different type of functions available to us for writing rules, such as logical conversion, date time, name address parsing, math functions, string functions, financial functions, regular expressions, file functions and so, so on and so forth. In this case, it's a very simple concatenation. So I'll write a rule like uh, name, and then I want to put a comma, and uh, then I want to put uh, just the state. So I'll do a state. And after that, I want to put a space. So I put a space, and after that, there is a zip code that is integer. And since we are doing concatenation of the strings, I'll use a logical or a conversion function to convert from integer to string and use this function and there I put the zip code, I compile, it is successful. I click on OK and my value is ready in output. I can take this value and send that to destination. So now the value is going to destination. And at this point, I can do even preview and see how it is going to really work in, in action. So if I go ahead and click on preview data, you can see here, it has taken the name, state, and zip code and combined it the way we wanted. Take the name, put a comma, state, and put a space, and zip code. So this is how you can write simple rules and simple calculations um, uh, to, uh, for uh, data conversion. Next example that we're going to see is a function. And uh, let's drag and drop a function. And as you can see here, I have the names, uh, but my destination takes uh, the first name and last name. So I want to take the name and split that into first name and last name. For that, I'll be using the name parsing function. So if I click on the function properties and I go to the name and address parsing, I can see here parse name function, I click on OK. And if I expand it, you can see here, it has all these options. So it takes the name as input, I will do it. I'll drag and drop the name at the top of name. And on the output, I have first name, middle name, last name, and so on and so forth. So I will be taking the first name, putting into my destination, and last name, putting into my destination. If I do a preview on this, you can see here it has taken the names and split into first and last names. So this is how you can use these functions and expressions. And then we have other maps such as the lookups, database lookups, SQL statement lookups, where you can write your own SQL statements to do the lookup, or you can call stored procedures, and so on and so forth. In this sample, we have so far learned how to use the joint transformation and uh, the different type of maps, such as expression map and function map. Now let's have a look at uh, the router and how to send the data into two different tables depending on the routing information. So let's uh, go ahead and take the state uh, because uh, we're going to decide the loan's uh, destination depending on the origin of the loan and that is, in, that is stored inside the state. Uh, so we mapped it to the state and we have the state data information inside the router. So if you go to the router properties and go to the next page, this is where I'll be writing the rules to decide the different routes. For example, for the California loans, I can write a simple rule such as uh, the state equals CA. And uh, the next rule that I can write is uh, state not equal CA. 
and uh, if I do this as a result what happens that you can see here there are two different outgoing nodes available for mapping so I can take this data and put into one and take this data and put into other table now let's go ahead and create the destination tables for the routed loans we need to create one for California loans and one for out-of-state loans in sample one we learned how to create database table destinations by dragging and dropping the items from inside the toolbox however in centerprise there is a shortcut to create database table sources or destinations using database browser so if I go to database browser and I point to uh, one of the existing connections here you can see here in the browser it shows me all the databases and uh, inside it the tables and views so I go to the tables in this uh, database and uh, I can see here this is my California loans table and if I drag and drop I can create source or destination but in this case it is going to be destination so I press shift and drag and drop and it creates the destination of California loans you can see it here similarly if I go to out of state I can do the same thing shift and drag and drop it creates a destination so I have two destinations if I expand it you can see here it has it has all the information it has the fields and I can do my map from this California loan so basically this this entire node goes to the top of it and it does all the mapping similarly I will do the mapping for this I'll drag and drop and it does the mapping so by these few clicks we have created the scenario that I was talking about uh, let's go back and uh, look at the scenario that I started with and uh, this is how it looks like I have the same loans and taxes I did the join I did some calculations the address calculation the name parsing and I added some couple of lookups as well and did the routing and sent the loans into California and out of state two different tables However, in this sample, I have a couple of more things that I did not do in the, the sample that we are looking at. Here, I added a data quality rule to check the data coming for the tax data. So if I do a preview on tax data, you can see here for, uh, for some loans, the tax is coming at zero. So definitely, I would like to check at the source itself the data is correct or not. So I added a data quality rule and that you can see, you can find the transformations you drag and drop a data quality rule and you do the mapping as you will do with any other box and if you go to the properties of that you can see here I've written a simple rule where I'm saying that property tax cannot be zero and if I do this and then now I do a preview on join since the data is passing through the data quality rule you can see here for the property it has added all the errors saying that the tax amount is zero so you can uh, this is how you can add a data quality rule Another thing that I have done in the sample is to add a profile. So I'm doing profiling the tax data. And if you do a preview on this, you can see here for the loan and the loan ID and property tax, two fields, it has collected all the information about how many zero values are there, how many distinct values are there, how many duplicate values are there, the sum, mean, median, mode, all the values are, are, are collected for the profile. And since profile is like any other source, I have mapped it into Excel destination and uh, when the data flow runs it writes this information into this Excel sheet and this, that becomes my report. So along with uh, doing your transfer it is creating a report on the tax set as well. This concludes this uh, part 2 of the how to videos uh, for Central Price Data Integrator. Thank you for watching the video.